What's up, guys? Jaxel here, author of the Exploit Panel Writer. Um, the update, the uh, program has not seen an update in over a year now, and uh, the reason for this is previously I thought I had lost the code, so uh, I just never got around to rewriting it. Uh, I recently f found the code, found the backup somewhere, so I was able to uh, do a quick update here. Um, before I want to go into some of the changes and explanations of why certain things are the way they are, I just want to say that the, uh, this program is the first and only um, C Sharp Windows program I have ever written in my life. Uh, I am primarily a web developer, so I pretty much knew nothing about the language, nothing about the platform when I started writing this program about uh, two years ago. Uh, so that's probably the reason for all the issues I've had with it, or you guys have probably had with it as well. Um, so try to keep that in mind as I explain why I'm doing some changes to this. Um, but with that, with the changes, I also want to mention that from now on this program, well, in this specific case, this program is going to be released for free. It will no longer be a charge for program. Um, the link will be available in the description. It is free. But you do have an option to include, to pay for it if you wish. You know, uh, you can choose the price you want, and the price can be zero dollars. That link will be in the description. All right, so let's get started. In addition to the changes, I'm also going to do a quick uh, review for new people who don't quite know what the program is and how it works. So let's launch the program here. All right, there we go. Program is launched. And uh, as you can see, it's got tabs, event, play, two players, four players, casters, captions, and about simple stuff. Um, the content in these fields, they actually get pulled in from various text files in uh, this data folder. And of course, you can edit these, and then they will change on your next load. And what you can also do is add things here. And when you close the program, if they're checked here, it will get added automatically to the text files when you're done. Now, there's a lot of settings. I'm not really going to go into m most of them. But, you know, they are pretty self-explanatory. But let's ignore them for now. Okay, so let's start with here. Um, well actually, I'll start on the two-player panel because it's the most uh, in-depth one. Okay, so we have source images here. If you go to config, it'll say image locations, the sources, they're going to be in XSplit images and match to underscore match, and that's this image. It's pretty simple. And when it outputs, it's going to output to XSplit output. Right now it's empty because we haven't done any outputs. Uh, same thing with the score images. This specific page actually creates two images, one for the basic match information and one for the score. So match, match, and score right there. And data files, that's just these. You can change locations and export settings. So when you close the program, any changes you make to these fields will get exported to those data files if you have them checked. All right, so what was I saying? Okay, so we've got the images, and I'm going to do a click quick example here. I'm going to click save. Click save. And two images just appeared here. One is this and one is that. I'm going to show you how this works by dragging the image right here. Right into XSplit. And this one too. Down there. Okay, there you go. So, now imagine this was a tournament match. You'd have the health bars here. The, uh, players playing in various locations, whatever f game it was, fighting games or whatnot. I normally do fighting games, so that's my example. All right, so we got XSplit here. And uh, let's change the name of a, uh, of, uh, a player. Let's say we're going to do Justin Wong versus Diego, no, Diego Umehara. Ume, I'm sorry, no, Diego Ume. Juarez. There you go. <laughs> click save. And if we go here, we can either click the refresh button right there, or we can switch scenes and come back. And now, as you can see, the information on the images has changed. And of course, I can 
change the scores as well. Whoops, wrong one. And just like that, Justin has a two and Diego Ume Juarez versus Diego Ume Umehara <laughs> is fixed. And of course there's the reset scores button and the swap players button in case people are sitting in the wrong seats. Alright, so you'll also see a button here called config versus. That's just a quick function I put in for myself. Uh, if I click copy ver versus, it will actually take what's here, put it right in front, the match information, which is right here, the round information, which is right there, the players, add the versus, and put it into your clipboard. So basically when I'm recording a file, I just click copy versus and then rename the file. Very easy, simple file renaming, and I don't have to type anything extra. So let's uh, move on from that. Okay, so we have text here. Now this is, if you click the edit button right next to each text, you can actually change a lot of things. You can change the font of the text. So let's go, uh, Broala, what the hell font is that? Never seen that before. All right, let, that's that's different enough, and we just change that to Diego. And see, Diego now has a different font than Justin. Let's go back into this. You can change the font size. You can change the style, bold, italic. I can even change the alignment based on the uh, positioning of the text. And uh, the positioning is right here, so. And now it, it may seem like these are X and Y positions and then these are also X and Y positions, but that's wrong. This is an X, this is a Y, this is a width, this is a height. So this is saying start at 195, 0 and go for 325 and 40 pixels. So basically it would be go from the top to 40 pixels down and go from 195 to, let's see if I do the math in head, uh, 520, yes. So so go from 195 to 520, this is 195, and around here is 520. Simple, so if I want to lower the text 30 pixels, I could do that. You can barely see the text right underneath it. So 30 was actually kind of high. Let's do 10 so it's easier to see. There you go. And now it's 10 pixels down from where it was. It's also aligned right. And let's move it to the bottom of the box. And now it's at the bottom of the box. Now another, a new feature that was added in the last patch was the angle. I can slant text. A feature added with this one is something called Glow. Now the reason I added the Glow is because I actually had some white backgrounds on uh, on the recent stream I had, and it made it hard to see the text. I'm going to show that. Like Diego Ume Juarez, you can't, you can barely see it. So I added the Glow feature. You can select the color of the Glow. Let's go red. Now. I know it says glow, but this is not actually glow. What it is is a simple drop shadow uh, to emulate a sh glow stroke effect. So if I click surround, it's actually going to place four drop sh shadows, one on the top left, one on the top right, one on the bottom left. Uh, that's supposed to say top right. I'll fix that. But th this is top right. So if I click that, oh, that's actually... I'm sorry, bottom bottom right, yeah. Except it says bottom left. So I am, I screwed up on that. I'll fix that. I'll, I'll release the patch. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So if you go surround, it's going to add it all around it. And now you can see it's got a stroke. If you go top left, it's got a drop shadow on the top left. It makes it a bit easier to see the text uh, when the background is the same color of your text. And uh, I thought that was pretty essential. Uh, there's also a four-player screen, a caster screen, and captions. Uh, you'll, if you are a uh, 
older user of this program, you'll notice that two tabs are missing. Right here and here, there used to be a tab for Twitter. I'm sorry, for Twitch and Twitter. And this was to integrate into your Twitch account or your Twitter account to make it easy to send updates and things like that. Um, sometime last year, Twitter changed their API, and I never got around to relearning it. So... Well, it's not that I didn't learn the API. I did learn the Twitch API, the uh, Twitter and Twitch API. I, I di just didn't learn how to implement those APIs in uh, C Sharp um, .NET. I am a web-based programmer. I can do it all in PHP and JavaScript, but this uh, .NET C Sharp is oh, god awful programming language, and I don't want to waste my time on it. And so that's just the way it is. They're gone. I haven't had the time to change it. I mean, to to research how to implement those back in. So I just never got around to it, and I've removed it to avoid a lot of confusion people have been having with them. Uh, beyond that, every this program is pretty much the same, except with the glow. Um, I did some other changes. I don't remember what they were, but as I said, the program is now free. So peace out, and you can find the link in the description.